Merry Christmas, everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Death Road to Canada with Dog and Pony. Today is Christmas for you guys. Uh, I am Dog and Pony, and this is Death Road to Canada. It's also the first full day of Hanukkah. Last night was the first night of Hanukkah, so happy Hanukkah as well, and happy holidays and merry winter season to everybody. Let's start this up. We're not going to continue our game. We're going to do a new game here in an empty slot. Don't want to delete our uh, current game. Okay, uh, I, I'm sick of Berserk characters. Let's get somebody else going here. Sure, a Charming Bruiser is fine, and a... I would love a uh, some sort of healing character, maybe? Okay, good enough. It doesn't need to be perfect. We're gonna do rare characters mode. Not extreme, not anything crazy. Just regular old rare characters mode with Shay and Taurine. All right. Oh, and we're gonna start. All right, and a little special treat. Uh, Death to Canada. Shay hears rumors that Canada is a safe place free of the threat of zombies with nothing to gain from waiting around Florida. She decides to brave the death road and travel north. Dog barking, horns, gunshots, and other noises draw zombie attention. More? Zombie attention. We could start with the cat lady if we want, but instead, we're just gonna hit the road. And here's the special treat. Merry Christmas! The group is searching through a house for supplies when something comes down the chimney. It's Santa! Ho ho ho! Have you been naughty or nice? Uh, if we say we've been nice, we get five food. If we say we've been naughty, we get 50 extra gasoline. I think, since we're starting with another person here, it's safer just to go with nice. Santa gives the group a present. It's a bunch of cans of corn, just what they always wanted. We got five food. Ho ho ho, Merry Christmas. His attitude is revealed, and he joins the team onward to Canada. We're going to control Santa the whole time. He's got... I don't know... Um, we'll, we'll go to the Almar. I don't know if he has really low strength, or if he's considered to already be carrying the uh, sack, like his, his bag of toys there, but... He can't pick anything up, or at least he couldn't in the test game I did. I wanted to make sure there was actually Christmas content, and there is. He couldn't, okay. In this one, he can totally lift stuff. In my first one, he must have just spawned with really low strength because he couldn't do anything. He couldn't even lift, like, desk chairs. All right, a bat. An aluminum bat is a really good weapon to get right off the bat. Oh yeah. Stick around for more and maybe even worse puns. Who knows? I'm liking the amount of food we're getting and medical supplies are helpful too. We don't have any berserkers, so medical supplies are useful for everyone. The aluminum bat, uh, he's not, Santa's not great at combat. Uh, his strength is good enough to lift some basic stuff, but he's not over the top uh, strong, and he's not super fit either, but that's fine, because he's got an aluminum bat, and it's easy to swing, and does a decent amount of damage. Some zombies were killing in one hit, some were killing in two. The fitness is what's gonna really uh, get us down. I don't know how many toilets we should open. Uh, it's fine, I'm not even gonna worry about whether or not we use up the genie charge in this game, I'm actually pretty sure we will now that I think about it. It doesn't really matter. We we definitely weren't going to get it on our other run that is currently active. That I'll pick back up tomorrow. Don't you worry. But I think right now we don't it's not that big of a deal. If if we get a genie in this run. Yeah, it's fine. So Santa, he can be kicked out of the group, but he can't die. If he dies, he comes back the next day, the next in-game day, um, and hides like the dead Santa body. If his morale gets really low, we'll see what happens. You might already know. You might have seen it. You might have read it on the wiki or... Uh, someone else did it in a video or something I don't know but maybe you don't know and in that case I'm not gonna tell you we'll see if it happens the group sets up camp late 
On the nearby highway is a bunch of abandoned cars. They're broken, but many should have a little bit of gas. Would you like to send someone to siphon out the gas? Yeah. Who to do it, though? We don't want to get Santa's morale down too quickly. I'd love if that did happen, but it's also a... It's not a good thing. It's a bad thing, so... We'll keep it from happening for as long as possible, because it probably will just happen on its own, naturally. Santa is unknown to anyone allergic to everything in Canada. Aww. How, did, how does he deliver the toys? Torrent hopes to find a flamethrower. Shay never seems to sweat. What are we picking out? Someone with a good attitude, I guess. You know what? We'll just go with Shay. Shay siphons the gas, but accidentally swallowed, swallows a bit and gets really, really sick that night instead of sleeping. We got 58 gas, but... And a, and a morale down. And uh, Shay is tired. Maybe should have gone with Taurine, because I think Shay is the better fighter. Help. Uh, with car trouble, the group meets a man trying to repair his broken car. He clearly has no idea what he's doing. We can recruit him. Maybe we do that. Uh, how's Santa at Mechanical? We don't know. We could learn it, or we could just recruit him. Let's do that. The group accepts Hortensia to the team. Hortensia joins the team. Onward to Canada. Probably, now that I think about it, shouldn't have done that because it is rare characters mode. And we do want to have rare characters on our team, not random characters. Light rain. The group reaches a city as it starts to rain. The drizzle seems to rile up the local zombies. It's a mild, irritated swarm in the afternoon. When driving to the city, the group discovers a gun shop. We are not... Doing a great job with weapons here. Uh, that's fine. We'll be fine. It's early on. Where's my aluminum bat? There we go. All right. Gonna do it again. Gun stop. We're gonna have a couple guns when we come out of here, so that's a bonus. Actually, it's not a bonus. It's just what we came here for. There's pistol ammo that we missed. I'm gonna pick up the gun so no one else uses it. I don't think we're gonna need it for now. If we end up needing it, I will try to swap it to someone else for safety, but I don't think that's going to be the case. That's all the ammo. I'm going to pick up this shopping cart, toss it to the zombie. All right. There we go. I'll pick up another, I'll pick it up again uh, just to get outside safely. Didn't actually need it. But you can you can never be too safe. That's not true. You can definitely be too safe. Uh, even in this game, Sometimes if you spend too much time clearing out riffraff, you end up uh, just having way more to deal with. You, you walk 10 feet to the side to clear out one zombie, three more spawn, you know? You were trying to be too safe. Gotta scratch my arm real quick. All right, give me a moment. Oh, okay, that was weird. Cabinet, ooh, I like that. We do need medical supplies. We've got plenty of food for the moment. Of course, we could always use more. We don't really have any to trade with, but medical supplies are definitely nice long-term, as long as they don't get stolen or lost in uh, puddles, things like that. Santa should have a thing where he just, every once in a while, pulls a random piece of loot out of his sack or something. I don't know. It'd be overpowered because then you could just always use him. You could always switch your system calendar to uh, December 25th and have the awesome rare character. This is the only way to recruit him. There, you can't encounter him naturally anywhere else. You just if you when you start up a game on December 25th, you will recruit him, or you will get the opportunity to do so. And if you, he'll join your team as long as there's an open spot for him. If you have a Berserk character, you can tell him uh, to cool it. Oh no, you can tell him... Oh, uh, what is it? It's a, it's a special thing. Um, I don't know what the what the word they use is. They tell him something, and then um, I don't think it's just cool it. And uh, he gets recruited as Evil Santa instead. Just junk. All right, this is a nice big building with lots of nothing in it. All right, one more. Nope, okay, cool. 
I was expecting this one to also have debris. Okay, it also had no loot. It just made us work for that no loot. Like a jerk. All right, cool. Let's keep moving. I think there was one more house to go into. Maybe not, we'll see. Okay, not that one, but this one down here is open. And it's closer to the car. We, n we made a nice neat little circle. Didn't get very much loot, but we did get a gun, a little bit of ammo, so we're happy with it. Let's climb in and get going. So far, so good. And this is, uh, you know, normal difficulty, rare characters mode, so I'm feeling okay about our chances of winning. Barricading before bed. At the end of the day, the group hides in a drafty old house. Some zombies roam around outside, and the doors of the house are barely on their hinges. Should someone barricade the house? Yes. And it's gonna be... Do we know anybody's mechanical? No. So... Hortensia started with a wrench, didn't he? Maybe we choose him for it? Hortensia barricades the flimsy house. He improvises. The results don't look pretty, but manage to keep the zombies out. Uh, his wits are great, but his mechanical is terrible, and then it increased to kinda less terrible, but still pretty terrible. Let's keep it moving. 13 driving days until Canada, doing okay. Got one more day's worth of food. I need to save up a lot of ammo if I'm going to make it. We all do, we all do. Gloomy weather trip, the weather is gray and dingy, and it's really getting the group down. Somebody decides to speak up to help the mood. Probably Santa, he seems like a great guy. Uh, we got a lot of people with good attitudes. We know three attitudes, they're all great. We don't know his, but we do know that he has great wits. Um, Santa, just cause. Santa starts talking to improve the mood. He manages to distract everyone from the crappy weather. Okay. I can dig it. We need to watch out for possible bandit ambushes. Agreed. But we don't have anyone paranoid. At least not that I know of. Maybe Hortensia. Can't be sure about that. Or at least I'm not sure about it yet. We got 11 food to trade with. So technically we have three food to trade with if we want to stay safe. We might be able to pick up a little bit of extra food here. It looks like we're going to. One gas in the toilet. And two food, that's awesome. Another food. Some chairs in the way. And three more food. Six food is incredible. We now have, uh, if we want to play it dangerous, nine food to trade with. I don't think we're necessarily going to find anything we want to buy. We could buy a cheap katana for five food. That's a waste. We find them for free and they break pretty quickly. We got the ammo emporium. We're going to say no thanks. And nothing back here. There's one more house to go into that I'm hoping has even more loot, but I wouldn't be surprised if it had nothing after that awesome food. Wow. Nine shotgun shells. It, this is pretty good. It was a good haul for somewhere where you can sometimes just find nothing at all. All right. I'm still very optimistic about this run. Doing fine on gas, food, high society fashion, post society, the group opens the door to a tea shop and finds a very fancy dressed woman inside, casually comparing the two boxes of tea. She puts the boxes down, turns half to you, and picks up her umbrella. We're gonna recruit her. This is a rare character. Four degrees to join. Weird, but then uh, sees how incredibly crowded your vehicle is with both people and various filth. Well, I never get rid of someone to make room. I think Hortensia. Oh, maybe Taurine. Taurian? 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 I'm gonna stick with Taurine because he keeps me energized. Uh, Hortensia did train his mechanical, but he's got worse. We can't choose Shay, and I don't think we would anyway. She's a big bruiser. But, uh,. Hortensia has worse morale than Torian, Torine, so we're going to get rid of him. Hortensia gets booted out of the group to make room for Ford. Ford joins the team. Onward to Canada. Um, Ford is a strange name for a person as a, used as, as, a, as a purposefully strange name for a person. In Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy with Ford Prefect, the group is about to explore a small house when they 
Notice that a horde is creeping nearby. The group will have to hold their ground for a bit before they can escape. Siege alert, there's no escape. Moderate near noon, one hour. We're gonna try to survive. We're gonna try to boost our weapon count a little bit. She's got a debutante umbrella. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Probably am not. You get a wrench. You get, okay. You get a wrench, because you actually have a hand-to-hand -hand thing that's better. All right, I don't want to give them the gun. Ooh, a hatchet. Somebody pick that up. All right, let's do it. That was good, that was nice. I think we're gonna be fine here. There's a little room to go into that I want to check out. There's very few zombies thus far. Um, I hope we can keep it that way. As long as they spawn mostly from the door, we're fine. The more come out of the, gr the more that are coming out of the ground, the worse off we are because that is what makes it hard to keep them funneled toward one side. You know what we haven't done yet? That. That could have been bad. There we go. I think defending seems to get us into trouble more often. Fighting, you'd think, would get people like running into the crowds and trying to fight them off, but. I've noticed that defending, excuse me, does that a little more often. I'm gonna need to take a drink of coffee after this siege. We're almost done. We can try to escape in just five minutes in game, which is like two more seconds. There we go. No more zombies can come inside. As you can see, there are none waiting outside the door. There was nothing in here for us loot wise, except the hatchet that we already got. So yes, let's go. Pretty nice siege. Okay. And we're probably gonna take a nice more Alan Random uh, skill gain as well. If we get a glimmer of hope, there we go. The group feels inspired after managing to survive that situation. I'm gonna take a little bit of coffee out of this cup and put it into my mouth now. So as much as I like the option of uh, plus two strength, more Alan Random skill gain is gonna be plus seven overall. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I joked a little bit there. We got three morale, four skills. Well, four skills top, so probably seven. We're gonna do this. Strength to everyone might be good, but I like this because we do have someone with negative morale. Every day is a great teacher as long as you don't get eaten. We got fitness, mechanical, shooting, and shooting. I'm real pleased with that. Santa's shooting, I think I would have preferred uh, Santa to get strength or fitness, but it really doesn't matter. The group finds an abandoned campground with a fire pit. We're gonna eat marshmallows. Gain a little bit of food here. All right. Feeling good, we got two characters at max morale already. Quiet city. The group explores a fairly quiet city. This is a good chance to resupply in relative safety. We got a mild sluggish swarm near noon. Going to the arcade. Train a little bit more shooting. It doesn't hurt. What are you doing? Cool. Santa is the one carrying the gun, so. I mean, not that we can't change that, but um, training is shooting is probably a good thing. I'm going to see who has the highest shooting, and then uh, if, if any are even revealed, and then train that person at the arcade. Getting a, quite a bit of ammo for our pistol. Even more. Just some Debris. Ooh. Medical supplies? Junk. I still think the game should have a complex bartering system through which you can use any individual item as currency with a, with it being weighted toward food. Every, like food is the best form of currency, but everything else can still be traded. I think that'd be cool. It'd be too complex for the menu system in the game. The way everything uses that uh, choose your own adventure style menu. But. It'd still be neat. I don't know, it's neat to think about, anyway. Nothing in here. Those zombies aren't dangerous enough to care about. All right, and they're sluggish, so we don't want to waste too much time. We'd rather just get through this when there's, uh, still, when it's still early, when, when the sun's still out, when we don't have to worry about the zombies getting crazy. We don't, we don't want it to get late enough for them to become a problem. All right a toilet, and a medical supply. 
bringing us up to three for this trip. We haven't spent any, as far as I recall. Okay, just keep it moving. I'm gonna close this door for the sake of not being followed, but I don't even think they're gonna be able to follow us. Another house here. We want to do all of the looting, then go to the arcade because the arcade spends, it takes an hour out of our day. And since we have a full party, it won't cause more zombies to spawn. So the less zombies there are, the better off we are an hour later, rather than, you, you get it. I think you understand. Rather than dealing with more and more aggressive zombies, we deal with more less aggressive zombies and then have less more aggressive zombies. I intentionally said that in a very uh, verbose, goofy way. If you were wondering, cool, baseball bat for someone else? I'm gonna keep using my aluminum bat because it's better than the baseball bat. Or at least I believe that it is. And with Santa, it's really about what you believe, not what is the, the truth, I, I think. All right, here we go. This is the uh, Quarter Eater Arcade. I don't think I've ever seen that name of a place before. Do we have any more houses to go to? No, just the arcade. So we're gonna kill a couple zombies out here since they will be a little more aggressive later, as I've discussed at length already. And then we'll go on in. There could be multiple functioning arcade machines here. We'll find out. I'm gonna start at this one, Arcade Break. Santa plays the arcade game. Santa plays an old arcade game named Death Splosional and really gets into it. Like all video games ever made, playing it increases your skills with guns. The critics were right. Before Santa knew it, two hours had passed. His shooting is revealed as really good and it increased to great. Awesome. I can't believe two hours passed. I was expecting one hour to pass. There's a little food in here too. We're going to look around for uh, obviously more loot and potentially a second arcade machine where we will tra train someone else in the art of shooting. There's like a crane game there. This one can't be used again, correct? No, it cannot. It cannot be interacted with. If we do find another arcade machine, which clearly we won't, uh, we will have to switch to somebody else uh, and let Santa be on his own for a little while. Okay, that was everything in here. I'm glad we did that. Now we not only know that his shooting is good, it's as good as it can possibly be, thanks to that. So yeah, I think giving Santa uh, first dibs on the guns is gonna be a good thing to do. I didn't realize how bad of a condition our car was in. I remember in the first couple videos, I thought to start the car, you had to tap the button, not hold it. Which might, I don't know, maybe that is true and I'm just doing it wrong now. But it, I, no, I, I don't think that's the case. They're all wearing sweatbands. Bandits appear all... <laughs> Okay, bandits appear all wearing sweatbands and all super buff. Even their dog, they demand protein powder. They will also accept 15 food to pass safely. We can challenge them to a pose off, but I don't think we know how strong Shay is. She's a big bruiser, so probably pretty strong. But I've never seen this option before, so Ford asks what's up with the outfits. Ford asks the buff bandits about their sweating, their sweatbands and constantly lifting dumbbells while talking. The bandits talk about an amazing lost tradition of bodybuilding that was lost when civilization fell. They show what they mean in an inspiring muscle exhibition. In the process, the bandits forget about robbing the group. Everybody's morale goes up. Ford's wits are revealed as terrible, but her attitude is revealed as great. Huh, I wonder why she's so dumb. She's got a great outlook on life though. Building that morale up and up. Hopefully we'll never have to deal with a uh, fatal argument in this run. It's getting late, there's no great place to camp. Solo zombies hobble around in the far distance and one might sneak up on the group while they sleep. Who should stay up on watch? We have a full group so we can take shifts. I learned that in yesterday's episode. Let's do it. The group takes turn sleeping during the night. Uh, well, w with a full group, there's enough people to still get plenty of sleep. Okay. I am glad I learned that because every other time I've done it, I was probably making a mistake by just choosing the most loyal character and then having them be tired the next day. While driving on the death road, the group decides to make a stop for supplies. We're gonna go to the hot dog heaven. We actually, I just did a hot dog heaven. It's, this is a pretty rare event. I think prior to yesterday's video, I've seen this once. Um, and then I saw it in yesterday's video and I saw it in today's video, which were 
which are recorded about an hour apart. So I talk heaven. Absolutely. I like it. Very thick and sluggish in the late afternoon. We're going to investigate the hot dog. We're good. Let's go. Yeah, there's not going to be a lot of zombies. They're sluggish, so we're, we're cool on that. Um, it is kind of late, and there's usually, at least last time, there was a lot of loot to be found. And we actually had to miss out on some of it. So, this time, hopefully we won't have to miss out on it. Wiener Marketing is the first place to go. That's where we're going to get the Wienermobile keys. And then, uh, we can feel free to explore the rest of it. Not exactly at our leisure, but, uh, we don't have to rush through it because we can go to the Wienermobile at any time for safety. We do, uh, no, we do have to rush through it, but if we get overwhelmed, we can stop looting. I don't want to do that. I never want to miss any loot in a place, but sometimes you just have to. When there's a lot of zombies, when it gets late, sometimes you have to give up on something. We do have medical supplies, so as long as no one dies, we'll be okay uh, taking a couple hits. Obviously, we'd prefer not to, but it's not going to be the end of the run if someone takes a hit or two. Even if someone died, especially if it was Santa, um, who will come back to life, I believe. I said that already, but, you know, I think, I'm pretty sure that's true. All right. Cool. Cool. I, quite a bit of food in this grocery store. This is the best encounter because you get a little bit of everything. It's like a normal encounter for each of these places, basically. So it's not like it's a packed grocery store, which would give you 50 food or more. It's not like it's a, you know, a hospital, but it, it is uh, usually a drugstore, a grocery store's worth of things. It's pretty nice. I want them to take out these zombies because Santa needs a second to recharge his arms a little bit. Here we go. Let's go in the super sporting store. Uh, I don't really expect to get anything worthwhile in here. There's food and ammo. I was just kind of expecting an extreme hockey stick. There's a shotgun over there. Uh, I've got a pistol in my inventory that I'm going to start using because it's pretty dangerous in here. And I'm going to start blasting him with this shotgun as well. I hope somebody takes... Oh, okay. Got ourselves into a little bit of a situation. We're okay, though. That's the last of our shotgun ammo for now. I'm going to switch back to the pistol. This is... Not great, zombie-wise. Oh, they're coming in through the front, too. I do want to get that fishing pole. Why? You know what? On second thought, you're right. I don't want to get that fishing pole. Let's just try to get out of this building. Come on, guys. Cool. Okay. More to loot up here. I don't think we're missing out on too much in the Super Sporting Store. We got the uh, shotgun, so that's good enough for me. More medical supplies, though. You know what? Let's stick outside for a little bit and see if we can't make a little bit of a dent in the crowds out here. Okay. Okay, that was a bad idea. I tried to switch to my aluminum bat and uh, switch to the shotgun instead, but we're good now. We're gonna pick up some medical supplies. And like I said, as long as no one dies, we've basically, this, this encounter has more than paid for itself because of the uh, medical supplies we just picked up. I'm sure we'll be able to heal with those if somebody does take damage. We're good. There's a gun stop. That's nice. A little bit of uh, gasoline in here. Somebody pick up that nail board and we'll be all set. Ooh, a pitchfork. Um, Time to swap weapons around a little bit. I guess I don't really need the aluminum bat. I'll give that to that person. I'm going to pick up the pitchfork and just start doing some stabbing. The shovel sounds awesome. I'll give... Oh, Ford is too far away. I'll give the pitchfork to Taurine. Pick up the shovel. Swing that a little bit. That's cool. I don't I don't know if I've really had much of an opportunity to use any of these weapons. We might be making a little bit of a last stand in here. Not a last stand, thankfully. But, you know, a stand. Gun shot. Ammunition is going to be important. We did just use a lot of our pistol ammo. We have a shotgun, so that shotgun ammo is going to be good for us, too. Is that? No, that's rifle ammo. Crap. Hopefully we'll get out of here fine. 
I think we're gonna be okay. It might be actually a bad thing to come in here because I don't know if we're gonna get more ammo than we use. Just in this shop alone. Okay. Um, probably time to go out. I wanna check real quick. There's another shotgun. I don't care. There's, okay, come on, Ford. Get up here. There we go. Okay. I think we're gonna call that a day and uh, get on out of here. Where's our last person? There we go, thank you, Shay. Climb into the Wienermobile, get in the car, and leave. We're all set. It's a good encounter. All things considered, we missed out on a little bit of stuff, but you know, who cares? Uh, 10 food, 79 gas, that's awesome. On its own, that's awesome. And we got even more, nobody got hurt. We got the medical supplies, the ammo, the shotgun, a trading camp with 31 food, so enough to buy something good. In case there's stuff to pick up while we're next to the car, I'm gonna drop off some stuff in the boot here. Um, I actually wanna use the pitchfork for Santa. And I think I'm gonna keep the shotgun for myself rather than the pistol. And uh, that's good. How's her shooting? We can deal with this later, but might as well get it out of the way now. We don't know her shooting or anything about her. We'll stick with just Santa and his shotgun. Nobody needs to have a pistol at the moment. Maybe that changes before the next time we go out, but I don't, right now, it's not a big deal. A nail board. I'll pick it up just for fun. The pitchfork had the nice stabbing effect that like, lunks, lanks, uh, lonks swords have, except for the Mr. Sword, which is swung like the Claymore. I'm doing my part to keep civilization together one anime sale at a time. We can buy the Windstar. I might do that. I want to see what else is for sale here in case there's something better. There's a firearms coach. Shay will use charm. Uh, Shay accidentally comes up off as uh, creepy. Oh well. We got a rifle collector. No way to charm this person. I think we're going to buy the Windstar. It is rare characters mode, so there's a good chance we find TLB. And because last time we had TLB, I had an opportunity to buy a Windstar and I didn't, I feel dumb. So now, I have an opportunity to redeem that. We have 16 food left, which is enough for two days. We're cool. It's good. Can we use charm on this guy? No. That's fine. Let's keep it moving. Back in the Wienermobile. Uh, the, the best thing about the Wienermobile is that it draws no attention to us whatsoever while we're out on the death road. This car should have no problems getting to Canada. Uh, you're wrong. It's gonna break down rapidly. Fight or flip. She makes mistakes while scouting a town and gets cornered by a large group of zombies while unarmed. She is trapped in a long, not not long, just in an alley. At the end of the alley is heavy garbage and a large fence. We don't have three options this time around. We only got the two. We got three one time recently. Use parkour abilities or throw garbage. Shay is a big bruiser. She's strong. She's gonna throw garbage. Oof. Oh, she's not that strong. Shay tries to fight zombies off by throwing garbage cans at them but doesn't manage to throw enough to stop their attack. She's hurt and her strength is revealed as just neutral. She's hurt, but technically she has like regular full health and she got healed up by Torian. So we're good. I'm gonna drink a little bit of coffee here. We got a bed and breakfast. Nobody to tell the person to cool it, unfortunately, but we can haggle it down to five food, which is the next best thing. Give me 10 food, I'll watch over you while you sleep. Too bad, you just get five. Uh, Shay gets a better deal for the night. You're a sly one, and we lose five food. The innkeeper serves up an amazing breakfast. Shay's morale increases. Everybody is now at full morale. We saved food, so now we still have almost enough for a night and a half instead of just one night. We got a town of traps. Uh, the group finds a street in a town that has traps all over it. Pits with blankets put over the top, snares everywhere. Do we have anyone with good enough mechanical to get through this? I think it's mechanical that does this. Normally, we'd, we'd have our regular version of Trevor. Uh, we still currently have, unfortunately, all of our uh, familiar face characters are berserk martial artists right now. 
for the extreme mode runs. It makes it a lot more doable. Um, but yeah, we don't have, we don't know anybody's mechanical. This is dangerous, so I just want to drive away. Somebody could have great mechanical. I don't know. I just don't want to risk it. Always be looting. While driving on the death road, the group decides to make a stop for supplies. We got a shopping mall or a bookstore. The shopping mall is red, which means it's going to have better loot for us. But we just did that uh, wienermobile. I think we're just going to go to the bookstore instead. Gain a skill, and that's fine. Moderate, sluggish. Get something to read. I like bookstores. We learn something at them. Who's the strongest? I really don't think we know anybody's strength. So I'll just give that to Shay. All right. Cool. I'll give him the nail board. Just because. All the zombies got knocked over. I don't know how that happened, but I'm happy with it. We need to find the, the readable book and not destroy it. Good, the handyman's Bible. We stuff it into our pack. Is there any other loot in this building worth sticking around for or should we just leave? This pitchfork works really well. So I'm gonna just try to stick around a, a little while longer. Open a toilet or two. Uh, we are not quite at genie levels of toilet, but we're getting there. I wouldn't mind it on this run. I know I've already talked about this at sort of length before, but no, we're good. We'll, we'll, we'll try for it. I don't think there's... I don't think it's possible to find a second usable book. And I don't think there's typically any other loot. We did just get one bonus gasoline, so that's something, at least. But we should probably leave at this point. I'll check around for one more room off of here. Yeah, there is one. So we'll give it a shot. The pitchfork works best when you can bunch a bunch of zombies up together and hit them all in one go. But it takes a little while to recharge and it uses a lot of our uh, stamina as well. I only got one with that and it didn't even kill him. Jeez. Okay, it's not working very well. There we go. Maybe it does more damage if you hit more zombies. The more zombies you hit, the more damage it does per zombie. That'd be a weird thing, but I'd... I could see it being the case, I guess. All right. Yeah, there's... Ooh, one more room. We'll give it a shot. A lot of books in there, but we already found our book, so let's just go. I wish there was more loot at bookstores. I'd, it's not that big of a deal, though. We got one gasoline out of it. The Handyman's Bible. Everyone gets a chance to read it and learn some new things. Uh, Ford's mechanical goes up. You know, Santa's mechanical was probably high enough that we could have done the uh, town full of traps, but I'm glad we didn't because one smiley might not actually be that good. We revealed and increased everybody's mechanical. Let's take a look at those one more time while it's all on one page. Well, not all on one page, but easier to look at. We got bad, bad, but not as bad, really good, and bad. Okay, so now we know that Santa should be the one fixing things. Meet new friends. The group spies a hitchhiker. He's wearing a hockey mask and standing still alongside the road, statue-like, staring off at nothing in particular. Uh, in one hand, he has a chainsaw, in the other, a machete. As the car gets closer, the hitchhiker turns his head slightly to gaze right at the group. I think we're going to replace Torian at this point. Do we get an option? With uh, Mason, I think when we stop for him, whatever, he just kills someone automatically. That's fine. Uh, the... The team stops at the side of the road to meet the hitchhiker. At first, there were too many people to fit a new person into the car, but then Shay vanishes off the face of the earth. How puzzling. Shay is killed. Mason's strength and fitness are great. He, he's better than Shay, let's be honest. And I, while I would have picked Torian to give up because I don't like his name, uh, Shay would have been my second choice because Shay wasn't a rare character. I'm glad he didn't kill Santa or... Uh, Forward. The group couldn't find any safe shelters, but was able to co cobble together a campsite. The weather is terrible all night. Mason's morale is going down. Nobody else minded much. Ford thought it was nice. And uh, then because we ate, Mason's morale goes up. So we don't have to worry about him murdering anyone just yet. If he does, I hope it's Torian. Or maybe Santa if Santa can't die, I guess. 
Okay, dark and creepy store. The group finds a waterlogged store. There's a lot of mannequins inside, barely visible in the darkness. The whole store is especially creepy. There may be some moldy supplies left in there. We're gonna send someone in. Who? Uh... I don't know, no one will die. I guess... Just Mason. That was a stupid choice. Don't let me do that again. I forgot that this could decrease your morale. Mason enters the dark and creepy store. He loses his calm and runs out of there claiming there was no loot. I didn't think about the morale loss. I thought he'd just take one damage. If he messed up, he did mess up and he took a morale hit, which means he might murder someone really soon. The group is driving down a long stretch of the road. No threats on the horizon. We're gonna visit this trader camp. Hope we get a little bit of free stuff because we've only got three food. Okay, we've got, uh, the strength trainer, we've got rifle, right, rifle ammo seller. No thanks. Um, a pipe bomb supplier. Sadly, this isn't enough food for trading, though he does give away a free pipe bomb. Awesome. I think we might have gotten some free rifle ammo too. And what do you got for us? Strength trainer. It's an old but fit man in matching gray sweatpants and sweatshirt. He screams something about building mass and bulk with an intense strength routine. He flails toward the heavy objects lying around. You have three food left. Sadly, it isn't enough to get huge. I want uh, Mason to declare a pose off in case it can boost his morale a little bit. Yeah! Mason wins the pose off, his morale increases. Now we don't need to worry about him murdering anyone. Made up for the uh, stupid choice I made about sending him into that grocery store. Start the car. Moving on. Zero zombies destroyed. Excellent. Okay. The Wienermobile is breaking down, but Santa will be able to fix it, thankfully. We are going to run out of gas before that happens, though. That's not good. Suburb Siege. Siege alert, there's no escape. From a distance, the group sees some skeletons and loot in the middle of the debris-blocked street they walked over to get a closer look. This gets the attention of a horde of zombies that rush out from all sides. Massive. Late afternoon, one hour. Try to survive. Mason should be good in combat. I think I'm going to keep controlling Santa. And... Uh, I guess Taurine is going to get the Wind Star. Ford can have a Katana and a Pistol. We don't have enough uh, Pistol ammo to give more to someone else, unfortunately. To give the other Pistol the Taurine. And uh, Mason might use the less of our gas. I think this is going to be fine. I, I was expecting a lot bigger of a crowd right around the start of this siege. So we actually got lucky here. I think we'll be able to survive this and loot the whole place. Decide what weapons we want to take, stuff like that. There's a paper uh, roll over there. I don't know if those are good or if DSYP is just extra good with it. We'll find out. And I'm happy about that too. And eh, maybe we won't find out. We might not bring it with us. Okay, come this way. Take out the crowd. Ooh, nice. Okay, some zombies spawned out of the ground, but they spread. They were spread out enough that it was actually like good that it happened because where when we, you know, it's good that it happened when it did where we were because I probably should have killed those zombies. Um, they ha they showed up on the other side of that fence. That was awesome. Uh, all the zombies are in a little bit of a choke zone right here. So, really happy about that. None are coming from the other side. We already killed the two that were in that house. They came out. I was, I should have shot them while we were in there for safety, but it's fine. That was awesome. Probably gonna take the sledgehammer. Uh, don't know who's gonna use it, but we'll take it. We'll figure it out. And the hatchets, of course. Don't know what we're gonna give up for those. I took a little too much weaponry with us. I was too, I, I was over prepared for that siege. I was worried about it too, I thought we were gonna die. Cardboard tube, I'll take this. I don't know how good it is, we'll see. Uh, it's awesome, it does the same thing it does with DSYP for apparently everybody. We got two more spots. Um, I'll give the pitchfork to you just for 
keys. I'll give that to you. I'll... What do I do? A second hatchet or a sledgehammer? Hatchets are more useful. Okay. I think we're good to go. This is a couple zombies trapped over there. I don't care. Let's leave. Yes, let's hit the road. Nine gas. Uh, that's just what was in Mason's uh, chainsaw. That's what we already had, unfortunately. We do need more. So much. We need more. We're going to lose our Wienermobile either way, but if we had more gas, we could at least just repair the Wienermobile and keep it a little while longer. Uh, Mason wipes some blood off his mask, and we're out of gas. We're walking. That's fine. We don't have any uh, people that are berserk, so it's not that big of a deal. I do want to swap loot around. We can't with him. I think we're going to save the Windstar for when someone we get someone with more strength. Uh... Who gets what? Well, Santa gets the pitchfork. I like the pitchfork. Or maybe Santa gets the cardboard too. Okay. And she doesn't use that. She uses her umbrella. She didn't use the hatchet last time we gave it to her, so... We're good. Let's keep walking. Reluctant bandits. Uh, without a car, the group is a sitting duck for bandits. The group is ambushed by awkward bandits that apologize for the robbery. They're likely new with this. We're going to reason with them. We don't want to give them, well, we could give them all our extra gas, half our ammo and medical supplies. That's a little much. We'll reason with them. Santa convinces the bandits not to go through with the attack. They didn't want to, they didn't want to anyway. Santa wants to help them, but can't spare much. His morale decreases. Dang it, Santa. That was a good thing. Why would that make you sad? I'm glad he didn't give them any of our loot. Because we lost a bunch here. While walking through the woods, Ford doesn't pay attention to where she is going and falls into a deep puddle of water. Her gear is fully submerged, putting supplies in danger. Her morale goes down. Do we have enough food for the night? We don't. We're going to get some despair setting in pretty soon. Uh, and that's not good for Mason. There's a city ahead, rotten with zombies. The group knows that walking through a city street like this is a bad idea, but a car waits at the end of it. It's a very thick hunting swarm, late at night. Um... That's all we can do. Hmm. You know what? I think we're cool. I think we're good with what we have. I... <sighs> yeah, let's do this. We're gonna start with the cardboard tube. Just because it, it knocks zombies so far away. And it broke already. Which is why I brought the pitchfork as well. And, um, yeah, let's just, we'll run for it, really. There's nothing else to do. Uh, if you stick around at these too long and try to kill all the zombies, you will die. It's, they're, they're, the, the zombies spawn too quickly. You really just need to weave between them, get whatever loot you can, and hope for the best. Guys, I would really prefer if you fought forward while I looted the gas out of this car. Okay. See, this is not good. But we might be able to salvage it. Here we go. I don't think we're going to be able to loot the gas out of that car, unfortunately. Is there more? Is there any other cars to loot? No. Not here, anyway. Oh, there's one. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, come on. Bullets. All I want is more gas. The more gas we have, the better off we are because Mason has a chainsaw. I guess we're just gonna hop into the vehicle. Guys, please get in. Okay, I can't switch to forward. She's gonna die. We're gonna start the car. Uh, unfortunate, but I guess my strategy of switching to the person to get them into the car doesn't really work if they're that far away. I think we're gonna do morale and random skill gain. I'd need to keep uh, Mason's morale high. We can train it once. It won't go higher than that, which is fine. That's exactly what we need. Every day is a great... Ooh, that's not good. Every day is a great teacher as long as you don't get eaten. Uh, oh, okay, no, that's not that bad. We got morale, morale, and then uh, Taurine was at the highest morale. His medical increased. Santa's fitness increased. I thought we got three morale and then uh, only trained one thing. 
I guess Mason probably tried to train strength or fitness. He can't. So we got medical. That's good. We got fitness. That's good. Two good things. We lost a good character, or at least an okay character, the night before Christmas. <laughs> the group wakes up after a night of camping to find an extra Santa. The group decides to say nothing about this and pretend that nothing is wrong. Evil Santa's attitude is revealed. Evil Santa joins the team. Onward to Canada. What? The group didn't have nearly enough food to eat. Doubt festers. Morale goes down. Especially Mason's. He's in dangerous uh, territory right now. We have two Santas, which I didn't think could happen. I thought that the, uh, the night after Christmas or whatever that thing was, was supposed to be um, only if Santa died. Then you get that to happen. Then uh, you get either evil Santa or regular Santa to replace that Santa. I'm going to drink a little bit of coffee real quick. It's a clown. It holds out a little clown horn. Okay. Whatever. We didn't get to recruit Clown. I think I would have preferred Clown over Mason. Mason's a... Oh, come on. Um. Hey, look. Okay. Mason is feeling really down in the dumps, but then suddenly feels better. Also, Evil Santa's missing. He must have wandered off. Evil Santa's left the, the team. Uh, Mason's morale increases. Okay, so we didn't really have Evil Santa around for very long. We're not going to have Mason crawl into the tanks, because he will probably lose morale and kill someone else. The group finds a gas station far off the main road. We're going to attempt to fix pumps. Santa attempts to fix the pumps. He gets them pumping. In no time, the group collects up that precious gas. Nice. That's a good thing. We got a lot of gas now. We have no food. Please let us stop for food before the next time we need to camp. Always be looting. A rest stop will have a little bit of food at it. A riled up house will probably have more. We do need the car. Because ours did get pretty damaged when we were trying to wait for Ford to get in. I think we'll be okay. We can't really afford to have Mason using that chainsaw. Hopefully he doesn't use it. Um, which means to prevent him from using it, we need to kill zombies as quickly as we possibly can. We will run out of gas again if, if he does. For sure. We need eight food. Or no, 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 no. We need six food. That's that's not too bad. Five more. We haven't found a kitchen yet, so I'm sure just the kitchen alone will have the five food we need, and we might even get a little bit of a surplus for a second night. I doubt we'll get enough for two whole nights. Twelve food? Not likely. But possible. It's a riled up house, which means. There were a lot of people here and they died quickly. We got a magazine. Cool runnings. We stuff it into our pack. Don't know who's going to get to read that, but... Oh, maybe Santa because he picked it up. Or we might get to choose. I never remember how that works. Okay. There we go. 12 bullets. If we win this one and we win the main run uh, from, the, from the main series that we're picking up tomorrow, in case you forgot, I've mentioned it a couple times. Um, oh, that was a whiff right there. Um, yeah, so if we win this one and that one, we could, we could get some consecutive wins going on. That'd be pretty cool. Now that it tracks those, I don't think it helps us at all. Honestly, it could hurt. Maybe they ramp up difficulty with consecutive wins. That would be really crappy. We have eight food, which means not only can we afford one night, but we can afford to recruit another person as well for one night. Nine food, that's even better. That's a night and a half for the three of us if we don't recruit another person. And I think it's time to leave this house. It's early in the morning. We didn't spend very much time here. Was there anything I missed? Nope, just those two doors off the main room. All right, let's get out of here. 10 food. Oh, I guess someone else picked up a food too. Uh, nine gas. Two medical supplies, that's good. The group now has a magazine, Cool Runnings. Who gets to read it? What does it do? I can't, I, Cool Runnings, I feel like it's gotta train fitness, right? I think I say that every time and then it ends up not being the case. Either way, I'm going to give it to Tori. 
Torian gets to read Cool Runnings. Uh, he absorbs the content. Sadly, he ruins the magazine for others due to his grimy fingers. It is fitness, and it's revealed as neutral. It's fitness because Cool Runnings uh, is a reference to a movie of the same name about a Olympic bobsledding team from Jamaica. The night before Christmas, hey, uh, the group wakes up after a night of camping to find an extra Santa. The group decides to say nothing about this and to pretend nothing is wrong. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Santa joins, uh, Santa, Santa's attitude is revealed is great. He joins the team. Onward to Canada. The group eats a decent meal. Okay, so I guess you can just get a bunch of extra Santas. He has morale. That's good. <clears throat> Other Santa's morale increases. Mason's morale increased as well. Uh, we got a crowded city. The group sees a city in the distance with zombies crowding the streets. Getting back alive may be difficult. We got a very thick but calm swarm here. And a grocery store. Absolutely gonna go to that. Other Santa gets a hatchet. Taurine has a hatchet. Uh, I'll give him the shovel too. Just because. I want to see what he, which one he uses. You know, the, the AI is good at picking weapons to use for themselves. Wowza. Right. This is a grocery store. Uh, we started right outside it, too. That's nice. I always get these confused with just, like, Yalmart encounters. And the crowded grocery store encounters where you get, where you're just in a parking lot. Like you would be at a Yalmart. Okay. Cool. This is going to be... Enough food for another night for sure. We're already there with the food we also have in the car. Um, anything we missed? I do want to kill as many zombies as we can in here because I think that's a safer option than letting them follow us out and catching us out in the street. We're good. Oh, I hope I didn't damage the car there. That would have been bad. Let's kill some zombies out here before going into another building. Overall, okay, we're... We're halfway through the run at under an hour. Uh, I hope you're in this one for the long haul, because I sure am. Though, I think it's going to be faster than our 100th episode special run. That's nice. Eventually, uh, my throat will start to hurt. I already recorded like two other episodes today, so... You know, I'm not... I'm not a veteran uh, radio personality or even a veteran YouTube personality I'm still just a beginner at that I'm not a radio personality at all I'm hardly a YouTube personality I don't think you can consider it that at this point I'm just a I'm just a, a guy that m makes way too many videos compared to the amount of people that actually watch them this town three blocks down also uh, my new uh, chiptune based three doors down um, cover band I'm okay with that joke I don't I don't retract that joke chiptunes not because of uh, blocks that's not the reference I was making I was just you know the Death Road to Canada music. It's not explicitly chiptunes, I don't think. I think the definition of chiptune is a little stricter than what this game uh, abides to, but I could be wrong about that too. Maybe this music is chiptune music. I'm not really sure what that term means exactly. Like, I, get, I have a basic idea of it. I don't know exactly what it means. I can't open the door. I'm too tired to open a door. There's nothing even in here. I'm going to let Santa's stamina rebuild a little bit. I'm not going to swing my weapon for a couple rooms here. Maybe the rest of this house if I can get away with it. Wow. Very little loot in this building. Luckily, my team is taking care of the crowd. Other Santa is also doing some stuff. All right. That was worth it. Let's keep it moving, though. There's nothing else down here. There was nothing off to the right either. Right? Nothing at the right, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the left and up, and then all the way up, and then over to the car. That should get us a view of the whole town. 
We already went in there. Oh man, there's a there's a there's a fence in the way. Can't get through that way. All right. I don't think we've checked all the way to the left of the top street yet, though. But there is one more house to go into, and it's still pretty early in the day, so we're cool. More food? That's awesome. We now have looted more than a full day's worth uh, just from this town, not including what's in the car. All right, nothing in there. I still want to keep Santa stabbing to a minimum with his pitchfork because in case things do go wrong, I want to be able to take out as many zombies as I can. All right. Medical supplies were great too. Eventually someone with Mason, the medical supplies are less important because uh, he'll, he's more likely just to kill people. I don't know if this is the case, but I would hope that he targets whoever has the least health, though I doubt that is the case. The game doesn't usually help you out with little things in that regard. If they're going to hurt you, they're just going to hurt you more or less randomly. They're not going to select anyone specific t to hurt to make things worse, but they also aren't going to help you out by selecting the one that's best. All right, back on the road here. That's everybody in the car. Get on out of there. I still can't believe... Ford didn't get back in the car. It's fine, but it's still annoying. At least someone has a positive outlook. Oh, Mason suddenly seems to get a big boost in morale. Also, Santa's missing. I didn't realize his uh, morale was that low, but okay. The group siphons gas from some abandoned vehicles and then spots a magazine in one of the cars. It's an issue of prepared preppers, the special edition in mint condition. Who gets to read it? It's going to boost shooting. Santa's at max. Uh, Mason can't have a gun, so Taurine. This was a hypothetical at the time zombie apocalypse special issue. Torin closely studies the firearm tips, emergency medicine article, and unusual but effective common repair tricks. His shooting increases, his medical increases, it's now positive, his mechanical increases, which doesn't matter. Uh, Santa's is still better. And we got 60 gas, yes. okay. I mean, I guess that depends on which Santa died. The better Santa died. The trained Santa died. That's... That's not good. We don't know this Santa's shooting. He'll still have a gun. And a pitchfork. I don't think we're going to really change anything in that regard. Alright. And I'll give you a gun as well. Let's keep moving. No more creepy pastas. The group is sitting around a campfire resting before a brutal day tomorrow. The group eats a decent meal. I think we're just going to go to sleep. We don't need to boost morale. Mason is our leader, which I don't want to be the case. I can't change it while we're out here. Uh, his morale is neutral. Let's just go to sleep. His morale is at the highest value it can be. I don't know why he killed someone. It might have just been random. I don't think his morale was actually low enough to kill anyone. Whoa, it's XR, and it's nice to see a familiar face. We're going to recruit her to the team. He's a martial artist and a berserker. For a second, I was excited because I thought we were going to have a paranoid explorer. On Comet, on Cupid, on Dunder. Did it say on Dunder, on Mifflin? I didn't see the end, but I'm guessing that was a office reference, just based on what I did see. The group meets another person just chilling on a park bench. He seems friendly. They have a conversation. Uh, just like before the world ended, what was the main topic? We can do an advice exchange. Uh, <laughs> Santa can do a pep talk. So, Taurine, advice exchange. Santa, pep talk. Xarn, giving me your stuff. Xarn, cooling it. This one, because I've never seen it before. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize. Exarn easily robs the friendly person. He didn't have much, but that will teach him an important lesson in trusting others. We got four food, three medical. Mason's loyalty is revealed as really good, so his morale goes down. I thought it would be the exact opposite of that happening. I thought his loyalty would be terrible, so his morale would just stay where it was. Marine's loyalty is revealed... Everybody's morale went down because I'm an idiot. We got four food out of the deal, which is now we have enough to eat for the night. So I guess morale will go up a little bit because of this. This is the best Christmas ever, says Santa. We have plenty of gas, so Santa's going to fix the car. He pops the hood of the car, easily repairs it in no time, and he's got a decent mechanical. That might just... <clears throat> I need a little bit of coffee here. 
That might just be across the board. Uh, Santa always has a good mechanical. Unfortunately, he no longer has his trained mechanical. I think he had trained it. I'm not sure. I don't remember. We're going to go to the Junkyard Palace because it's flashing and cool. The uh, group sees two people get trapped in a junkyard by a massive crowd of zombies. They could be saved from their fates if you distract the horde. Junkyard Pals are unrecruitable, but they do give us um, a good... They, they train us really well. Uh, you need a hatchet. Okay. That's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I am so uh, used to the quantities of zombies in the extreme modes that these just look so easy to me. I, you know, I still have a chance of dying, but I think I'm much better off for having played those modes. I haven't beaten them yet, but I'm uh, getting better at the normal. Like, I'm, I'm not good enough to beat those modes yet, I don't think. Maybe. Maybe this next, th this one we're currently on is still beatable. You know, yesterday and tomorrow's episode, in case I hadn't mentioned it already. Um, but I think just... Playing those has made me better at normal mode. I don't know. Barring like terrible out of our control situations like when we're walking and we lose all of our loot all at once and then lose um, a bunch of health and all that stuff. Like that happens and it's terrible and there's nothing you can do to come back from that basically. There's nothing you, do, there's nothing you can do to prevent it. There's nothing you can do to come back from it. You're just, you're done. Um, but as long as things like that don't happen, I think I've gotten to a point where if I just played the normal modes every time, I would never or rarely ever lose, which we'll find out. I'm sure we'll get to the end game in this one and hopefully it goes well. There's still a chance that I can mess things like that up. All right, they, they train us in shooting and something else. I don't remember what the other thing was, but this guy is probably gonna train us in shooting. Let's recruit him right now. Junkyard Pal. Well, you know, get him. He says, help. I'm freaking out right now. This is a reference to the trailer park boys, isn't it? I didn't get that before. I think I get that now. Man, XRN was a great addition to the team. She really uses this pitchfork well. I feel so much better off for having chosen this combo. I'm glad Mason killed Santa. I wish he had killed the other Santa. No offense, other Santa, but you know, I'm glad he did get rid of a group member so that I didn't have to, I probably would have left XRN behind, to be honest. If uh, we still had a full group, I probably would have just said, you know what, no, we're good, without really thinking about the benefits of having a berserk martial artist using a pitchfork. Here's our other junkyard, pal. They were right there, I just didn't see them, I guess. Clem asks, for your help. I don't know if this, yeah, okay, this guy's also supposed to be a reference based on the hair. I don't really watch Trailer Park Boys. I think it's funny, I just don't watch it. If you can get him out of here, he'll teach you, he'll teach the group everything he knows about car repair. That's awesome. Things have been bad since the car broke down. It doesn't matter how good you are, cars break down fast on these roads. Okay. We'll see if there's any more loot to be had. Just crowbars, which I don't particularly care about. I'll pick up the one that was down below, but I don't care to have two. Is there anything else over this way? I don't think I went all the way over here. Doesn't look like it, just uh, zombies. Okay, let's, let's just pick up that crowbar and leave then. This one specifically, and we'll get in the car. Everyone's in, we are out of here that is and just six days away from canada two food 50 gas that's not really though uh that's mason's chainsaw acting up again the group escapes the junkyard clem survives and shows some great repair tips while he fixes up the car Ooh, he fixed our car for us and increased our mechanical that's awesome so mechanical increase santa's is really good at this point you rescued leonard and thanks he gives the group one second i want to see wow the car is fully repaired uh, he gives the group some shooting tips, and we got 30 rifle ammo. Everybody increased their shooting except Exarn, 
who, since she's a martial artist, can't shoot. I am very happy with that. I like the junkyard, pals. Let's all get milk and cookies at the North Pole. I'm glad we chose that instead of the stupid whatever other option I almost decided to take was. The group uh, finds an empty spot along the road that looks as good for camping as any. The group eats a decent meal. And then morale goes up for Mason and Taurine. That's good, because I don't want Mason killing anyone. Uh, Santa says, ho, ho, ho. Ranting man. The group is ambushed by a yelling man. He's fighting, or he's fighting. He's ranting and raving. He doesn't look particularly dangerous, but those rants are starting to sizzle. We tell him to say it and not spray it, but that'll probably lower our morale a little bit. So we're going to just knock him out. Instead of being surprised by the ambush, uh, Mason rushes at the man as he's ranting to knock as, as he's running and knocks him out, he doesn't even get time to react. His morale increased, which is why I wanted to do that. I thought it might. XRN seizes the opportunity to steal his stuff. That's a that's an awesome uh, synergy right there. Having a berserker and or I assume bandit while having Mason. We got four food, four medical, 22 gas, 20, 21 ammo, 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 ammo. Morale goes down, unfortunately, so it's not that great of a synergy, I guess. Okay, please don't kill anyone, Mason. Please don't kill anyone. We need everyone in the group. Trading on the death road. We have eight food left. We'll visit the trader camp. We're not going to be able to challenge anyone. Ooh, crazy cat lady. Hmm. We already decided not to take her at the beginning. Why take her now? How about those zombies? What a pain, am I right? Absolutely right. We'll talk to this person. Gas is next conversion. No thanks. We knew what it was. I just talked to them anyway. <clears throat> Medical attention. We could rob the doctor, but that would lower Mason's morale even more, so no thank you. And obviously we don't need to buy any medical supplies. We've got 20 of them and not very much food. That's a lot of medical supplies. Mobile gun show, leave for now. Thank you very much. The gas sales guy, no thanks. We can't tell anyone to cool it, which is super lame. We couldn't tell this guy to cool it, right? Oh, that's not a thing. That's why. Okay. No one to tell to cool it. So we can't get a charge going on that. But we're fine. We'll, we'll, we're okay with it. Everything smells a lot different than it did before soap became rare. That's, that's disgusting. Mall of the Dead. Oh, so after this, we should be able to get a morale and random skill, skill gain to, uh, prevent Mason from killing anyone, thankfully. The group is driving through a ruined city when they end up being surrounded at all sides by a horde. They are funneled into the only place that looks defendable, a ruined mall. So we should be able to survive this one partially thanks to the fact that there should be mall cops here and the mall cops will um, be shooting. And as long as we can keep them alive for long enough, well, if we can't, um, what the heck? Come on, talk. Ready to rock. Okay, so he joins our group and keeps shooting, which is good. Uh, there's a cowboy rifle that I want someone to pick up. It's not XR. Uh, I'm gonna pick it up. Give it to. Oh, Santa's got a full inventory. I'll just give him that. Oh, I don't need an umbrella. There we go. All set. Let's keep it. Keep it going. Keep stabbing with the pitchfork. Try to rescue the other mall cop if we can. You know, every little bit of help uh, helps. It doesn't look like there is another mall cop. Or at least not one that I can see. Keep shooting, man. Keep shooting. We're going to get these guys tangled up in the shelves a little bit. We're going to try to kill them before it has to come to that. But for the sake of our survival, if more zombies spawn like that, exactly like that, um... Ed actually still worked out fine. I was expecting that to be worse, and then we were going to want to kind of get them going through the shelves for our safety, but it ended up not really mattering. Where's the other mall cop? I don't know. Maybe the mall is, this mall was uh, only big enough to have one, in which case, okay. I'd really prefer that he didn't have that umbrella. I want him to have the hatchet, but... When the umbrella breaks, maybe he'll pick it up. Oh, hey, there's the other mall cop. He's dead, which is good for our safety. We do have to kill this crowd because they're right by the door. And also, I want to go back for that 
stupid hatchet. Cause dumb idiot pick it. Where did I get this umbrella? I could have sworn I put that down. Okay, we're good. There's nothing else of value here. I don't know how all those umbrellas got picked up. I kind of want to kill these zombies, but we should probably just go. I feel bad for that other mall cop, but also he's just like 70 or 80 pixels on a screen that uh, don't actually benefit me in any way. There's a fishing pole here. Uh, I'm going to control Taurine for a second and force him to pick this up and leave the umbrellas behind. Umbrellas break too fast to actually be worthwhile. Okay. Yes, let's go. I don't think we- yeah, we don't get any reward or anything for having the mall cop. Please, Glimmer of Hope before anything else. Sometimes it can glitch and give you something else before the Glimmer of Hope. We need a random skill gain with this morale. Full heal. He's not damaged. I don't like that it gives us that option when he's not even damaged. Every day is a great teacher as long as you don't get eaten. Mason's morale goes up, thank goodness. Everybody's morale goes up a little bit. Uh, medical, good. Mechanical, medical. We don't... Oh, Taurine's mechanical is getting pretty high. It's just as high as Santa's at this point. And Santa's strength goes up. That's cool. Wow. Quick stop. Just eat food. That's good, too. Four days until Canada. Getting close. The group finds a man in a bathroom. The man says nothing. He may be upset that you barged into a bathroom, but his face is expressionless, so who knows? He's purple for some reason. Pinkish purple. I want to recruit him. And I really want to give up Taurine. I've been trying to for a while at this point. Uh, let's make sure this, uh, this shouldn't matter, but I'm going to make sure we take everything out of his inventory first. Okay. And now we've got three rare characters. If you include Santa, which I do, of course, he's rare. Despite the fact that he was a guarantee in this run, he's rare nonetheless. Taurine gets booted out of the group to make room for DSYP. DSYP joins the team. Don't soil your pants. What is happening to Mason's morale right now? It's neutral. It went up. He was. Th I saw that he was thinking about something. I didn't see what it... Oh, no. Okay, this is what made his morale go up. Darn. Okay. I mean, not darn. Still good. Mason meets another survivor who rants about seeing an oiled-up bodybuilder that was too swole to control, ripping zombies in half, and after uh, bench-pressing them... Neat. Uh, Mason feels pumped up about this, this story and benches a nearby log. His morale goes up. His uh, strength couldn't go up because it was already full. I think it would have. This wouldn't have happened if we kept Obama out of the White House. That doesn't seem accurate, but always be looting. While driving on the death road, the group decides to make a stop for supplies. We could go to a small suburb or a gym apartment. I don't really think the gym apartment is going to be that useful. I guess we could train strength at it potentially. Or Santa's fitness, which would still be helpful. We'll do that. There should still be food at it. The small suburb will probably have more food, and I think that's more important now that I think about it. Let's uh, make sure... Oh wait, we haven't made our choice yet. Small suburb. Okay, and then from there, moderate and calm. Um, why can't I make selections here? Oh, wow, okay. Now we make our choice of what we bring with us. DSYP is going to keep his cardboard tube. <clears throat> um, Santa gets not two guns. Sorry, Santa. Okay, this is good. Except last thing. There we go. All right. I don't know what just happened to my brain. I've played enough of this game that I should know how those screens work. All right. We did not choose gym apartment, now that I look back on it. I was about to say, if the gym has uh, strength training, we'll do XR, and if it has fitness, we'll do Santa, but uh, no, we didn't choose that. We chose the one that hopefully has six or more food. If we don't get six food out of this, okay, we're good. I, was, I would have been so mad, so mad. There we go, six food. Right in the first kitchen, and there could be even more kitchens. Hopefully. Hopefully there is. x strength is actually very important for me now to train. Um, 
because it's the only thing that'll make this pitchfork better. She doesn't get tired swinging it, but if it could do a little bit more damage, maybe hit a couple more zombies. I don't know if that's how that works, but I, I really want to train her strength now. Now that I've thought of the possibility of doing it, it seems awesome to me. One more room in this house. I can't believe how many medical supplies we have. That's pretty crazy. Like 20 in the car. 20! It's not the most we've ever had, but it's a lot. And I don't, like, I think we've used a couple. I don't think we've used very many at all this whole run. It's late. All right. Oh, food probably in this cooler or ammo. I don't know why you'd keep your ammunition in a cooler, but I guess I ain't judging. You know, I am judging. Because you kept that ammo in a cooler, I bet you couldn't find it when you needed it. And I bet that's how your suburb got overrun. You dummy. That's why you uh, are, are dead and I am traveling the death road because I don't keep my ammunition in coolers. Unless you were hiding it from like bandits, in which case I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that happened to you. But good hiding spot. The bandits didn't find your uh, ammunition before, before they left town. After rolling through and stealing all of your... Well, not all of your stuff. Some of your stuff and then the town getting overrun by zombies probably because of all the commotion. <clears throat> Alright, 12 food is awesome. Do we have enough in the car? Do we have... If we have four in the car, we have two days worth. I don't know how much we have in the car. We might have more than that. No, just two in the car. If we get two more food... Um, I re okay, now I remember that I said we needed six food. So, that would definitely put us at two in the car. If we have... Um, if we, if we find, did I say four more, we will have two days worth, which would be great. Absolutely fantastic. I would be th thrilled. One more medical supply. We don't need those. I would gladly trade those for food right now, but I don't even think that's a possibility. <clears throat> Ooh. Yeah, we've, wow. 20 food. Now we're four food short of uh, a th third day's worth. We're not going to hit it, but we could in the next encounter. <clears throat> like, even in a, in a crappy encounter, we can get four food. In a grocery store encounter, obviously, we can get more than that. Who knows? Oh, this... Okay, I thought we couldn't walk on this, like, bush thing here. It's just grass, though. But we were able to walk on it. And now we're able to get back in our car. And we're able to get on out of here. It's just before 10 p.m. It is 10 p.m. We left at exactly 10. That was cool. 18 food brings us to a total of 20. Again, four short. Uh, 41 gas. Mason used... Oh, no. I think we... I don't think he used his chainsaw and used nine of our gas. I think we were so low on gas. This is gonna be bad. Okay, we were so low on gas that he didn't even get a full chainsaw's worth. The... Group endures the smell zone all night until passing out. They are not happy in the morning, but they were at least able to sleep. Mason's morale goes down. Everybody's morale goes down, but I'm most concerned about Mason's. Santa's is uh, high enough that I'm not worried about him losing morale. Though, even still, we haven't had that funny encounter that happens that I didn't tell you what it is yet. Thanks a lot, Zombie Obama. Why are you blaming Obama for everything? That's twice in one thing, and I think it was x both times. Uh, anyway, yeah, there's the, the fun Santa thing that hasn't happened yet. Trader Trap. The group checks out what appears to be a trader settlement. They are instead ambushed by bandits who have taken it over. One of them looks injured. We can offer to heal their injury. I think it would be really funny <laughs> to uh, choose Mason to heal the injury and then have him murder the person instead, raising his own morale and spooking everyone in the place. I don't like the odds of his medical being high enough to do this, and we could definitely spare the medical supplies. So let's just do that for safety. <clears throat> All right. Always be looting while driving on the death road. The group decides to make a stop for supplies. Normally I'd go to the deadly Almar, but because the cabin has a car and our car is breaking down pretty badly and we're three days from Canada, I'm gonna choose this car. This will last us the rest of the game. The group finds a car sitting alongside a country road. It's in great shape and seems like it's been recently driven. A cabin is visible to the north. 
We're also running out of gas, and this encounter should have more gas than a Yalmart would have. Don't care about that. Santa's got one. Uh, I'll give him a hatchet. We're cool. We're cool. It's an ice cream truck. Uh, the only reason we would... Oh, crap. The only reason we would need to get another new car before the end of the run is if the chassis gets damaged too much by something like jumping a... You know, like a whatever. Jumping any sort of anything. I can't think of anything that we would jump. I can't think of the words for like the three things we can jump. Chasms. I'm gonna go with chasm. Uh, what, what does it say like opens up in the road? I don't know. Like wh where the road buckles and then forms a ramp. If that happens, we might need to replace our car, especially because I might have just damaged the chassis by hitting it with my pitchfork. Oh, oh, XRN almost just died. Okay, we got the car keys. We're going to loot this whole place. We're going to have enough food for the rest of the game. After this, maybe. I don't know. I am a psychic. Hopefully none of it gets stolen. I really think we're set for the game on food. That's awesome. It's still pretty early to be there. I mean, no, we're three days away, but you know, it's better than being two days away and not knowing. There you go. Someone just picked up that rusty machete instead of a hatchet. It, the rusty machete is good, don't get me wrong, but it's gonna break. Do you, do you really want to break your weapon, BSYP? Okay, Santa, don't be stupid. Okay, I'm gonna get Santa a little bit further away from the umbrella. So he doesn't pick it up. Dang it! Santa! <clears throat> Stop it with the umbrella! You don't need it! Let's get him further away. I accidentally closed the door before. Shh, don't you dare. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Santa. Is there any gas out here? How much do we have? 19. Okay, we have 30 gas total. Um. We need to look over this entire area to make sure there's not any canisters out here. And then we can go. I want it to last till the end of the run, and I would love it if we could get a little bit <clears throat> of extra for the pitchfork in the end. Or not <laughs> the, the chainsaw. If we could get a little bit of extra gas for the chainsaw at the end of the run, the final sieges. Doesn't look like it. We're going to hop into this ice cream truck here. He fits perfectly. Get in the car, and <clears throat> we'll be on our way. This went pretty fast. I mean, I know we're not done yet, but we're not even at the hour and a half mark yet. Five food, 30 gas. That sucks. I was really hoping there might be a little bit more in the car. All right. We're up to 15 medical supplies, though. We got to have a plan in case the car breaks down. Not really. I think we're, we're set on that, Exarn. At least someone has a positive outlook. Who died? Santa's missing. He'll probably turn up. Santa has left the team. Mason's morale increased. Trading on the death road. Okay. Uh, it sucks, but we might be able to get another Santa. It's technically still Christmas. Uh, shotgun peddler. The man is carrying several shotguns. Most of them lashed to his back. He has become. He is booming out a simple yet effective sales pitch. Shotguns for sale. Shotguns for sale. We'll tell him to cool it if there's no one else to do that with. Medicine salesman, I'm gonna say no thanks. I don't wanna recruit the crazy cat lady because we don't really have enough food to do so. Keep moving, that's the best way to not get bit, agreed. We got an ax merchant. We could buy the electric guitar, but I think we're just gonna leave it be. Is there anyone else to talk to here? I think there's a small chance. It might not be the case because of how he died with being uh, technically just like unrecruited because Mason killed him. But I think there's a chance that Santa can come back. The peddler is really annoyed by us telling him to cool it. I'm trying to make a living here. He yells and stuff and we're on the road. I don't, I don't think we're going to get a chance to get a full cool it charge. There's a fire. Uh, the group goes up against, goes against their better judgment and camps in a city apartment because there's no zombies around. This could kill Exarn. When they wake up, the building is on fire. Who leads the escape? Probably gonna pick Mason. His composure is really bad. So DSYP is the only choice that has good enough composure 
Or uh, he, he he's the only one that doesn't have a known lowest possible composure. Composure. He's why P tries to cal keep calm and observant. He panics and then wastes precious time. Everybody's morale goes down. That sucks. But luckily, Mason's isn't low enough to hurt anyone yet. His composure is revealed as neutral. He did have the highest uh, composure. He plans a fast way out, and they all leave unhurt. Then his wits are revealed as neutral as well. Um, the group gets away. They eat a decent meal. We lose six food, and then our morale increases to frowny for DSYP. We're two driving days away from Canada. The car is completely run out of gas and comes to a stop. That's really bad. I didn't think that would happen. Rough terrain. Morale's going down. Uh, nobody died from it. But somebody's gonna die from it because it actually lowered Mason's morale low enough to probably kill someone. So, despite it not literally killing someone, it killed someone. The bear stole my stuff. Uh, that bear stole my, soul, my stuff. Ugh. I need more coffee in a second. The group attempts... The group's attempt at camping is interrupted by a very angry bear. They are forced to abandon the camp with a little sleep and must make a panic decision about what to grab fast. Oh, Mason's gonna punch the bear in the nose instead. Mason rushes to the bear, jumps up a good height, and then thumps it in the nose as hard as he can. The bear freaks out and runs. The group is able to go back to sleep. Uh, frowny, frowny, and neutral. That was very good for us. The group eats a decent meal. So despite the fact that that's normally a negative encounter, it was really good for us that time. Heal up, Exxon rolls up her sleeves and starts tending to their wounds. Uh, Exxon treats some of their wounds. Her medical is revealed as terrible, but it increased to frowny. That healed DSYP. Mason is still a little low on health. Um, without a car, they're demanding all food and gas plus half of our ammo and medical supplies. All of our food isn't even enough for a full day. That's fine. All of our gas is zero gas. Half of our ammo is fine by me and half of our medical supplies. I'd rather not, but okay. Give their demands. No good options here. The group pays up. They lose a chunk of their supplies. They're still alive. Oh, Mason's going to kill someone. Everybody's morale is super low. What happens first? Cabin at the end of the road. After hours of hiking, the group finds a car sitting alongside a country road. It's in great shape, but the keys are missing. A cabin is visible to the north. We got a very thick hunting swarm in the late afternoon. We're going to search for the keys. Things went from great to pretty darn bad as soon as Santa died. I'm going to put the shovel away. I think we're going to be fine here. What I'm worried about is when we get back on the road and um, we either get a fatal argument. Maybe this will boost our morale a little bit, just getting a new car, but I doubt it. I think we're either going to get a fatal argument or Mason's going to kill someone and then we'll get a fatal argument. Who knows which happens first? Uh, I think... I'd prefer the fatal argument first, because that might boost our morale enough to not have Mason kill someone. I really hope neither happens. That'd be the best option. Because then, uh, we don't have a guaranteed loss. I've been playing this for a long time now, and I'd really like to win it. Though, if I don't, it's not a big deal. We've already beaten this game mode, so it's cool. And it, I had fun with it. I think it was a good run. I think we did our best. We like we took no damage in any looting encounters throughout the whole thing, except for when Ford just didn't get into the car that one time. So, you know, it was a well-played run. Maybe we made a couple bad decisions, but overall, you know, with recruitment and stuff like that. But overall, I think we did a great job. So I'm happy with it either way. Plus, we're getting a little bit of food here, so we're actually going to be able to eat tonight. Maybe. Actually, no, we're not. Despair is going to set in. I don't think there's any way this ends in a victory at this point. Unless we intentionally allow Mason to die right now. But then if we do get a fatal argument, we're still kind of... You know, screwed. Because Mason is one of our best fighters. I mean, Exarn is good, but Mason, you know? I guess we're getting out of here in this car. We're probably going to run out of gas again soon. Because if we do get a fatal argument, the chainsaw is going to be a requirement here. 
If he even bothers using it. Maybe he won't. I'm gonna keep controlling Exarn. He's just really optimistic. Uh-oh. Mason is feeling really down in the, in the dumps, but then suddenly feels better. Also, Exarn is missing. She must have wandered off. Exarn has left the team. Mason's morale increases. It's still pretty low, unfortunately. And then a Sasquatch. DSYP sees a Sasquatch on the side of the road, minding his own damn business. Bigfoot ain't real. Turn around and investigate. Mason's gonna wrestle it. Maybe boost his morale a little bit. Mason leaps from the car and locks arms with the Sasquatch. The Sasquatch is no match for him and submits easily. The group applauds Mason's victory. Everybody's morale goes up. We are no longer at risk for a fatal argument. We could win this. Hopefully we recruit someone. We don't even have enough food for one night with these two characters, which kind of sucks. Bustling city, furniture store or hardware store? Which one's going to have more food? Neither. What's good about a furniture store? I always forget this. You know what? It's been a while. Let's just go to the furniture store. What do you have equipped, DSYP? I'm going to give you a hatchet. Uh-oh. We have a full inventory. DSYP, how is your strength? We don't know. We don't know your strength or fitness. But I don't want to give you the pitchfork because that could be dangerous. Whatever. Let's do it. We still have a chance to win. Because of those, because of the Sasquatch encounter, I actually think we could win. I wish we could sw swap out Mason's weapons because the pitchfork would be better. Furnitarium. It's a place where you can just throw a lot of furniture at zombies. I don't know if there's any additional point to it than that. So it only benefits you for the current encounter. But we'll see. Maybe there's something in here that I'm forgetting about. I want to get to a table so I can throw it. Can I open the toilets? No, I can just pick them up. That's weird. Not, I guess, super weird, but a little bit weird. Is this food? Okay. We have enough food for the night. So that's good. I don't know why the furniture store had food, but I'm happy about it. At least we are guaranteed now to have enough food for tonight. We'll see what else they got in the back here. Uh, bathroom. All the toilets left open. So nothing good out of that. Can I lift? Am I strong enough to lift a bathtub? Ooh, I am. That's awesome. Okay. 2.30 p.m. I think it's time to leave the furnitarium and start looting the rest of this town. Hopefully getting a little bit more food out of it. It'd be nice to be back to a point where we actually have enough food for the uh, rest of the run. Remember when I said that? Oh boy. All right. Oh, that was a little bit of a waste of that bathtub, but you know, it's still intact. You can pick it back up. That was awesome. More food. Um, how much food do we need now? We're two days from Canada, so we need three days worth of food. So we've got three in the car. We're up to six. We need to get up to 12. We need six more food. That's doable in this town. All right. Feeling good. I think I can win it with just these two characters. I think uh, as long as our morale doesn't take any big hits, we're, we're A-OK. -okay. We are uh, in, the, in the home stretch. I guess the home stretch is technically maybe just the last encounter. At most, it's the last three encounters. <clears throat> But there is, at the very least, a light at the end of the tunnel here for us. So I went from incredibly optimistic to um, pretty pessimistic to kind of optimistic. I'd say that's where I am at the moment. I'm at kind of optimistic. I hate you so much. Every, not you audience, any uh, AI that puts down a hatchet for an umbrella. I can't take it. That's going to break in another couple swings, and then he's going to be weaponless because he's too stupid. Ah. Maybe it's better in the moment, but it's not better long term. 
So I really hope that he puts that that, that breaks and I'll just go replace it again. If not, I have to take control of him and go grab the hatchet and leave. All right, there's a cabinet here. I'm gonna take it as many medical supplies as we can because, well, we might need them. Okay, I'm gonna control the OSYP for a second. Hopefully not too long after I do this and get out of here. Let's switch back. He won't go into a different room without me, so we're good. This tub is so helpful. All right, I'm gonna carry it in with me again. Mostly so I can have it to carry out, not because I thought that was gonna be a big deal. Oh jeez. Okay, kill those. See, he's perfectly good at using the hatchet. He killed that zombie in one swing. For some reason, he just wanted the umbrella. All right, nothing in here. Let's keep it going. Nothing in here, DSYP. Close that door, come on. All right, ooh. Oh, that's, that's a good thing right there. We now have over 50 gas. If we can get a little bit more, I'd be real happy. I just almost knocked something over on my desk. I don't know what though. And we're getting to a good place on food as well. I'm feeling really good. Medical supplies probably. Nice. All right. There's a whole nother block to explore. Hopefully with some good stuff at it. Uh, maybe just some debris. There might be even another block, but I doubt it. No, there's not. All right, there's nothing up here. I guess back to the car. Let's keep it moving. Our morale is looking fine. I think Mason's morale just goes down automatically, like on its own, without any triggers. Uh, six up to nine food. We got enough for two nights. Okay, feeling good. He stares silently, didn't do anything to, to his morale. Passing out after, er, exhausted after a long day drive, the group scouts out a camping spot and falls asleep immediately after. All right, a little bit of coffee for me. We're gonna hit our uh, <clears throat> final trading spot pretty soon. Who do we know less about? Definitely DSYP. Let's, let's learn about him. DSYP reveals his true essence. Uh, strength, terrible. Shooting, terrible. Fitness, terrible. Mechanical, terrible. Medical, terrible. Attitude, eh. Loyalty, terrible. What is he good at? Nothing. Why do we have him? Jeez. For a rare character, he's pretty bad. He's got one inventory spot and terrible stats. That's weird, right? Okay, last shop before Canada. We've got five food to trade. We're gonna visit this trader camp. Maybe get a little bit more food. If we have more food, we will be able to get a little bit of a dexterity bonus. Hey, get out of our house. Hey, look who you're talking to. Be a little more polite. Like, not for my sake, but for yours. Army surplus, leave it alone. I don't think we're gonna buy anything, but I wanna look, you know? Carnage weapons. We got no one to even say cool it, let alone a cool it charge. We can't bring any explosives with us because th that would be DSYP's only weapon spot. And, and uh, Mason can't change his weapons at all. So I guess we, we have a pipe bomb, but we just can't bring it with us to the final siege or the second to last siege or anything. Close to the border. Giant armies of undead perpetually lurch around the Canadian border, unable to cross. The group gets a gets caught up in a lesser swarm before they can find a safe camp. Seizure alert, there's no escape. Overwhelming. Nightfall, 1.5 hours. Hide out in the house. This is, uh, this is it. I'm a little worried that we won't do it. But again, I don't care if we win. I would like to, of course. Winning uh, the game is nice. But I... I'm happy either way. It was a good run. So, who cares if we win it? So far, so okay. DSYP is uh, back, almost back with us here. Oh, the zombies are spawning in just really bad places for me. I need to pick up furniture. 
to take them out as quickly as possible, but they keep spawning where I need to go. Okay. Come on, DSYP, you can do it. You can do it. Don't get hurt. No, 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 don't die. No. Okay. Now I, I'm really uh, feeling like we can't win it. Let's do this. Uh, I should have done this faster. We don't need the change. We don't need the gas for the car anymore. So why was I saving it? Uh, I wasn't thinking about it, actually. I just forgot that we had this. Hopefully we get a little bit more gas for the next siege. We gotta kill these zombies as quickly as possible because uh, we're about to run out of gas and they're gonna keep spawning. DSYP is dead. His hatchet is on the ground and there's nothing we can do about it or with it. Here we go. This should be good. We should be able to get out after this. Um, I'm gonna go up here. That was a waste of gasoline. The cheese is over. We could try to escape. Okay. Uh, don't get damaged. That would be really dumb at this point. I think we're just gonna switch to my machete. Kill these zombies. Um, try to create a gap off to the left side that we can escape down. Like that. And we're good. There's nothing here for us. Unfortunately, no extra gas or anything. Yes, let's go on to the next siege. And we have enough food that we'll get our dexterity bonus. Upsides. We we just used the last of our gas, which is dumb. Uh, none of this helps us. Mechanical obviously doesn't help us. Um, fitness we can't even gain. We can't heal. So I guess random skill gain is the best thing we can do. Every day is a great teacher as long as you don't get eaten. Nothing happens. Okay. Great. Nothing would have happened for the rest of them either. I guess mechanical would have at least trained something, but who cares? Mason prepares for the brutal day ahead of him. Canada is close, but the, zombies, the zombie forecast is bad. He eats a decent meal, and then he eats a little bit more. Uh, he didn't get a dexterity bonus. I guess his dexterity was already pretty high. Or something. The ultimate, Ganky. Mason feels all alone in the world, but he can't let it get him down. If he keeps on going, he knows that he'll meet new friends. What? What does that even mean? Are we going to meet someone new? Nearly. Ugh. Sorry, I'm feeling a little tired right now. It's been nearly two hours. All right. Nearly at the border to Canada, Mason is surrounded by seemingly endless undead. To survive, he must face one last siege. This is the final siege, but not the last battle. It's been a while since we've seen this screen. Siege alert. There's no escape. Overwhelming. Noon. Four hours. All or nothing. We can't take anything with us except for our machete and our chainsaw with no gas. So the first thing we need to do is, uh, we can't pick these up, can we? Crap. Okay. We need to find gas. That's priority number one. Uh, kill whatever zombies we safely can. Find some gasoline. I don't know if we're going to make it past this. Uh, I doubt it. Look at this. So many zombies. So little ability to kill them. Very little... Uh, zero useful loot. The ammo would be fine if we had someone else here. We don't. Um, the layout's pretty... Bad for us. No gas in there. Okay, so we are... There's no, there's no, uh, way out either from where we currently are. Oh, crap. This might be the end of it. No, nope. yeah, okay, I, I messed up. Keep swinging, keep swinging, you can get out. We died. You know what? Again, I don't feel too bad about it. It would have been a nice win, but that's okay. We've died on the death road to Canada? Dang it. Once again, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa starts tomorrow, I believe. And, um, again, not for me, because it's like November 20th or something right now, but for you guys. And, um, happy holidays to everyone. Uh, if you, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you in the next episode.